What's up guys, this is Massey, welcome to another video. In this video I want to talk about solubility and precipitation. The first example here I have a solution contains 1 times 10 to the power of negative 5 molar of sodium phosphate. What is the minimum concentration of AgNO3, silver, uh, silver nitrate, that would cause precipitation of solid silver phosphate? The KSP for silver phosphate is 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 18. So if I write silver phosphate in solid form, when it dissolves, it's going to be 3Ag aqueous form plus PO4 3 minus aqueous phase and the concentration of phosphate it says is 1 times 10 to the power of negative 5 so KSP will be equal to Ag to the power of 3 times PO4 KSP is 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 18 Ag is not given we need to actually find it and it's 1 times 10 to the power of negative 5. So Ag to the power of 3 will be 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 18 divided by 10 to the power of negative 5, which is 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 13. So Ag, the concentration of ion, is going to be the cube root of 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 13. When you calculate it, that's going to be... 5.6 times 10 to the power of negative 5 molar of silver ion. <coughs> so any concentration more than this is going to result in precipitation. So precipitation of silver phosphate will occur for any concentration greater than this one. Let's see the next example. It says the KSP of ALOH3 is 2 times 10 to the power of negative 32 at what pH will a 0.2 molar of aluminium solution begin to show precipitation of aluminium hydroxide so aluminium hydroxide in solid form when it dissolves is going to produce Al3 plus plus 3 hydroxide ion both in aqueous phase The KSP is given, which is 2 times 10 to the power of negative 32. That will be equal to aluminium concentration times hydroxide concentration to the power of 3. Aluminium concentration is given, which is 0.2. So OH to the power of 3. <laughs> Now, in this example, a solution is 1 times 10 to the power of negative 4 molar in sodium fluoride, NaF, Na2S, which is sodium sulfate, sulfide, and Na3PO4, which is sodium phosphate. What would be the order of precipitation as a source of Pb, which is lead, added gradually to the solution? 
the KSP of PBF2, PBS and PB phosphate is given. So I start with PBF2, it's going to be PB2 plus, plus 2 fluoride. KSP is 4 times 10 to the power of negative 8. So PB2 plus is going to be 4 point times 10 to the power of negative 8 divided by the concentration of fluoride which is 1 times 10 to the power of negative 4 you need to make it to the power of 2 because the coefficient here is 2 when you calculate it you have 4 molar now the second one PBS when it dissolves it's going to produce PB2 plus in aqueous phase plus S2 minus in aqueous phase that's going to be PB2 plus equals to KSP divided by concentration of sulfide, which is the KSP is 7 times 10 to the power of negative 29 divided by 1 times 10 to the power of negative 4. That will be 7 times 10 to the power of negative 25 molar. Next one. Lead phosphate is going to produce 3 PB2 plus plus 2 phosphate both in aqueous phase. Then I can say that PB to the power of 3 times phosphate to the power of 2 equals to KSP of lead phosphate which is 1 times 10 to the power of negative 54 so that's going to be PB 2 plus to the power of 3 that's going to be 1 times 10 to the power of negative 54 divided by phosphate squared which is 1 times 10 to the power of negative 4 to the power of 2 that's going to be 10 to the power of negative 46 PB is going to be cube root of 10 to the power of negative 46. Four point six four times 10 to the power of negative 16 molar. That's going to be the concentration of lead in the third salt. Now if you compare them this one is going to be the smallest one, so it's going to precipitate first. PBS is going to precipitate first. Then lead phosphate is going to precipitate. And after that, PBF2 or lead fluoride is going to precipitate.